Hey everybody, Texas Trucker here, Lance's Performance Shop along with StarMopars.com. Sunday night about 8.30, 8.40, somewhere in that range. Uh, we have turned into the lush land of greenscapes and uh, subsequently I've got some water that kind of ingresses its way into the shop. So if you hear a fan in the background, I've shop backed yet again. <laughs> I've got the fan running. Uh, it dries out pretty quick, so uh, my apologies if there's background noise. But with that aside, where we kind of left off here, uh, it's been ridiculously busy at work, kind of eats into my free time. But uh, right here, we have the right choice. This is what I picked up to kind of uh, update at work uh, for myself personally. And this is the fully polished Right Grip 2.0, just a selection of sizes I use most frequently. Over time, we'll add to it, as I mentioned in the previous video, I really wanted the engine and eighths for three-quarter stuff, simply wasn't in stock, I didn't want to hold the order up, so, you know, kind of nix that one for now. Uh, also, it's come back to bite me because I've been doing a lot with three-eighths, <laughs> little junction boxes and stuff, uh, they're sort of like, technically, you could use a slotted driver, but it's much easier to apply torque and not slip out with the box end of a wrench or a socket, so... Uh, the 3 8s will definitely have to get added in. That said, I went with the full polished. Why? My favorite wrenches I've ever used at work are the Proto Challengers. I don't know, I've said this several times, like I don't know the era on them. Uh, the Challenger line was sort of like, I guess sort of a lower tier Proto, still made in America. But they're phenomenal. Uh, there's a couple of them that are still in like really, really good shape. We probably bought like multiple sets or stacked duplicates or something. Or they just like got cast to the side. I don't know. Predates my time on the planet. But uh, what I can tell you is I love them. Uh, the In terms of like a stereotypical American wrench. I mean they're full polished chrome in your face. Uh, big rig style stuff. And I love them. And why would I not just get a set of Proto Challengers here? Why did I go with right? Well, they don't make them anymore. Uh, Challenger, essentially, if you try to like follow lines, it became Blackhawk, but that's like totally different than Challenger and sort of Blackhawk's good stuff. It's just offshore. And uh, you can actually get that stuff very reasonably. It's uh, kind of strange you don't see more videos on that stuff. But anyway, the Proto Challenger stuff, I don't know the era on it. Um, I would guess late 70s, early 80s. I mean, it might maybe even go into the early 90s, but just so, so, so nice of a wrench. Uh, extremely durable. Uh, I know what I put them through. Lord only knows what they were put through prior to me or what my back has turned. And uh, this was kind of like the closest I could get. Like I said, at work, I kind of try to keep things American uh, to an extent. And uh, with that said, though, this is something that I, I had to face this situation. I had to face this dilemma. And I wasn't quite sure how I was going to go. And subsequently, I kind of did it blindly. In a perfect world, uh, you would order in, in this case, three different items. And I did. I just decided to go this route before investigating them personally. And what in the world am I talking about? Well... I pivot over here to grab my sheet of paper to price things. We're only concerning ourselves with one wrench right now, and that's going to be the half inch drive. I would typically do 9 16 and I actually, I'm not sure what went down, but uh, one of my orders, one item was like not what I ordered, but they were the same price. So I can't like be super mad and I'll use it anyway. But this is a half inch full polish. Just to recap for you, and I'll link this below. I don't make a dime off of it. It's strictly there for your convenience now. Don't make a dime off of this, but you save 20% with a discount code Lone Star <laughs> Alpha Gloves. Uh, but part number 1216 is what you see here. This is the Right Grip 2.0 full polish. Okay. Now, if we come in and we go with part number 1116, you're going to spend a little bit less at 1107. Uh, so if you want to be exact, 58 cents cheaper. These prices are all based on HJE. That's somewhere anyone can go in order. Your mileage may vary locally. You might get fantastic deals. They might be marked up super high. They might be a pain and never come in. They might try to talk you into buying Milwaukee. I don't know what happens for you locally. But if we can uh, get a... There we go. <laughs> Dang, they just do so many things right. No pun intended there on these wrenches. I... Like I said, I've kind of covered it, but uh, there's the part number, 1116 USA. should have just started there. That would have been nice. 
What do I love here? Well, number one, we've got half inch. It's oriented the way I want it to be. It's on the opened end and it's on the box end and it's on both sides. Basic things, you think, oh, that's stupid. Go grab a handful of your wrenches from different manufacturers and let me know how many of them actually do that and oriented this way. Big pet peeve of mine, you know, if you hang a wrench, you cannot hang it from the open end. I mean, you technically could, but very few people are gonna go to the links to do that and there's nothing like commercially available I know of short of a magnet. 99% of people that hang wrenches, which I am a fan of, I do that at work, you're going to hang it by the box end. It's easy. It doesn't require anything special or waste your time fabricating something. That, you could argue, like, yeah, let's put the half inch here oriented in this manner. But then the problem is, it's usually here, and it's usually upside down, and it just <laughs> blows my mind. But this is essentially the exact same wrench in a satin finish. This, again, mirror image of the one above it. You're just going to pay 58 cents more if you want polished. Now, where are we going with this? Well, we've got to actually go 32 cents more than this guy <laughs> and 16 cents less than this one. And what do we have there? Might surprise you. It is their part number. 3116, if I spin it around this way in the correct orientation for you, zoom back in, focus, you're thinking like, hey, okay, so there's your part number, 3116, uh, what's, what's the deal, it's half inch, you see it now, hopefully you do, it's kind of misleading with the glove, because it can sort of look satin chrome, this is a black industrial finish, I believe that's literally the technical term from right, simple, it works for me. This guy is sort of like, price point wise, again, only going from HJE as my baseline, that is the mid-tier wrench. Now, if you actually go through the catalog of right, whether you're online or in paper like I have sitting over here beside me, the wrench that you see as the default is this guy, the lowest price one. It's the 1165, or I'm sorry, 1107. And the reason for that, I think that's, again, right, you know, they've kind of got a reputation Reputation as sort of industrial, governmental work type stuff. And it wasn't always about, you know, like the full polished chrome, right? You know, it's just like with the German wrenches, we sort of see the matte chrome or the satin chromes come in, give you a nice texture, there's no reflection. Pick and choose your poison, better grip, easier to clean, you know, it comes down to personal preference ultimately. But... Uh, that is sort of the bread and butter, and if I go through the great lengths of moving all these wrenches I just painstakingly placed over there, I'm going to actually show you what I'm talking about. So, if we come in here to the handy dandy catalog, which I can't do this with a computer screen, well, we technically could, but I'd have to edit a lot more because it'd be multiple stages of footage. This is the cover page, okay? If I come down here, 83, big page numbers, another nice thing. Right here, this is page 85, which means this is 84. You're going to see these wrench sets by number. All right, so like 711, that's going to be what? An 11-piece SAE wrench from 3 8 to 1 inch in a denim tool roll. You'll note that it's just 11-piece combination set. And you're thinking like, okay, well, it looks like that looks shiny to me, buddy. What's your point? Well... If we turn the page again, and we kind of get into metric line, that's another thing I like with Wright. They cater to the SAE people like myself. That's what this country was built upon. <laughs> In my opinion, it's how it should have stayed, but whatever. Uh, globalism be danged. Right here, we're continuing on, and at some point in time, we break down, and we get to black combination wrenches. Okay? That's sort of what you see here. The sets for black combination wrenches are only going to be available in... Uh, SAE. That said, you can put together your own set. And right here we get to full polish, okay? So, that's essentially right telling you, hey, we're going to do things and we're going to do things in this order. Satin, black, and then of course, full polish. So, if I come in here, it might be a little bit easier to understand from this frontage. Combination wrenches, this is standalone. So if you're like me, this is what you're ordering from, building your own set, or just like, hey, I need two nine sixteenths and, you know, two three quarters for what I do. These are your standalone part numbers. But note that we start with satin. Uh, SAE is in red, metric sort of in the blue. When we come over here, full polish is up next. Full polish SAE, full polish metric, and then we get into the black industrial finish. 
So Wright is literally ranking these things for us, uh, kind of, I guess, in the order they would go. This is akin to if Star Villa were to be like, hey, you know, we've, we've gotten our footprint in the door in the aviation side in America, and these people, you know, some of them leave out, some of them have buddies. Um, you know, who knows, maybe they, like, build a bunch of, like, Porsche race cars or something, and there's a guy, and he's like, man, I really love these wrenches, but I wish that they were full polished chrome, like I'm used to using. Whatever background story you want, just insert it there to kind of tie in with your life, but if Stavilla were to do that, if they were to be like, oh, you know, there's actually enough demand for this, and I think we're going to sell a crud ton of, like, mirror polished wrenches. They would do that, but for them, their pride and joy, their bread and butter would always be their OG satin finish. And then you're going to have that. Now, let's say that they get out in the automotive world, sort of like high-end race teams, and then it trickles down, as things always do, all right? And you get to a point where there's this guy that maybe has been using Snap-on or Ride or whatever. He just likes to shop around and try things or find deals. And a supplier comes to him, and he's like, hey, you know, you want to, said you needed it to three-quarter wrench you broke the end off of it you, you want to try this one he's like what is it and he explains style villa to him and then it's like yeah but i want it to be black you know and style villa maybe over time they come in and they add that line you know again insert any manufacturer there but uh, that's sort of how things are going to pan out and it's evidenced i believe in the pricing again if we can get that to convey across terms which in the research i did it seemed to but once again, to walk you through this, Wright's satin finish, think along the lines of Stavilla or any German stuff we bring in here, 1107, the black industrial finish, 1145, and the most expensive, as you would expect, is the fully polished at 1165. So you're not breaking the bank. It's not like, you know, you've got the satin finish is 10 bucks the black industrial finish is 20 and this is then 40. it's nothing like that they are all within striking distance uh, if you dig around in your pocket you can basically upgrade from satin to fully polished type of a thing so that's really nice but what i want to showcase is simply the three finishes side by side because i don't think a video exists with that uh, this is one of those things again you know you got a lot of people that probably throw you know the black industrial finish all day every day you probably got people who use the satin you probably got people that say hey we need a new wrench set and they go back on po's you know the supplier and they find okay they bought the quarter to one inch and they just deliver whatever they've got whether it's full polished or satin or what have you uh it's one of those things you got to realize you know not everyone is like you are watching a video about tools not everybody is going to go out and stand in their shop that flooded and record a video showcasing the identical wrench in three different finishes. You are a different breed of person. I'm glad you exist, because uh, otherwise I'd just be talking to myself or like posting crud on a you know internet message board somewhere. And it's a situation where you've got to keep that in mind. So, for all you know, you know these industrial plants you go by. Are they using Harbor Freight stuff? Are they using cheap junk? Does the you know purchasing agent buy crud from Amazon? Uh, is it some old guy, you know, that, uh, you know, served overseas and he's come back and he just strictly buys American? Uh, does he have a personal fondness for William stuff? There's so many stories out there that you just never know because not everybody, you know, is into this as you are, right? Like some people, they get in their truck and they drive it. Uh, they buy a really nice one with a high finish out and then somebody comes talk to them and they just don't care. Uh, running a Mopar club, you see that all the time. You know, I go and there's a gas station and someone pulls up in an SRT, right? Top of the line at the time. And you're like, whoa, you know, I got to tell this person about, you know, the, the get together we've got this weekend. You're pulling out your paperwork and everything. You go over there and you're like, hey, nice car. And they're like, oh, thanks. And you talk to them. They have no idea what Mopar means. They just look at you like you're speaking a foreign language. Uh, you invite them to something and they look at you like you're crazy, you know, and like you're gonna, you know, give them like paper with drugs on it and follow them home or something. <laughs> and, uh, it's really weird because you would think like the person with the top of the line stuff would be super into it. Not always the case. Similarly, sometimes, you know, there's like somebody driving around in some V6 that they've stickered out and cut the mufflers off of and you think like, ah, oh, you know, they're probably not into stuff and it turns out they're like super into it. They don't have the funds necessarily that the person in the SRT does at this point in their life. But they're gun ho they know everything you could ever hope to. You tell them about the get-together, and they become a fantastic member, and then you stick it out. They stay around uh, over time as, you know, they evolve, you know, financially or what have you. 
they show up and they've got the RT or the SRT stuff. So sort of what you're going to see with tools. You know, some people might use Write 2.0 or Snap-on and they don't go home and they don't tell their buddies about it. They don't talk to their wife about tools or, you know, tell their kids that you got to buy American. Uh, it's just, it's a wrench. <laughs> You know, so there's a wrench and there's a wrench to those types of people and then there's a wrench to our type of person right so uh, with that said I've got some things that might surprise you here so in this case again classic Americana if you're into SK super chrome stuff from back in the day or if you love snap-on uh, anything like that this is the route you're gonna go you're gonna go full polish that's what I did here again largely based on how much I like the proto challengers I had Pros on this, like, okay, con first, is you touch it and it leaves fingerprints. That's in part just due to how nice it is. <laughs> and, uh, I think the camera has been screwed with. I had to take a lot of pictures recently, graduations and stuff. But uh, this is what you're looking at. You can clean it up. You can clean it up beautifully. I didn't touch this. I touched there and I wiped it off. Catch-22, right? You touch the wrench, you use it, it's filthy. Will it bother you? Probably, if you're the person watching this. So you wipe it down, and it's clean. This one right here is sort of the OG bread and butter for those of you that have been on my channel a long time. Again, think Stavila, think Ghidorah, think Wright. Uh, I will say this one, while it is satin, this is sort of more of a Hazette type of an approach, right? What I mean by that with Stavila and Ghidorah, Ghidorah in particular, you've got the satin finish across the wrench here if you're thinking like man that thing sure is shiny up top well yeah <laughs> that's full polished okay now the handle itself for grip dexterity what have you it is going to be the satin finish and then right over here on the box end it is also polished so that bothers some people it's not a consistent aesthetic some people are going to be like wow i really like that best of both worlds other people it's just going to drive them nuts for me personally I don't mind it. I do tend to prefer, prefer say, like a Ghidorah style, but you definitely get a better grip, a better purchase on the wrench itself. Obviously, that's exacerbated as you apply torque or you try to get something that's stuck out, and it's kind of a nice deal, but I have to tell you, and I know this is not popular with people, but this right here, whatever they do to this, this is a this by far out of these three wrenches has the best texture in terms of dexterity for you the end user anti-slip purposes whatever you want to call it now i realize some people are going to be just appalled by this this looks like something you got in the bargain bin at you know home depot uh, which to my credit i have some huskies they were kind of a long pattern sae and uh, haven't used them in quite a while since like the early teardown on the truck but uh, pretty solid wrenches but they did not have this texture okay that was like if I just came in and painted this or just a blank this adds just a little bit now if you get it in the right light it almost seems like a very thin coating because you can swear that you see the satin chrome shining through I'm sure particularly here on the jaws that's gonna happen over time but I this is something you'll have to do for yourself if you're curious about this if you want to try right and let's say I feel like people that like the fully polished, you're going that direction and you don't care about this unless maybe this is a backup set. Maybe every once in a while you have to work outside in the field and you're in a you know a wet environment or you're in a super desert environment, but every time you have to go on a service call outside, it's freaking raining. That seems to be how it goes. Or it could just be a deal where you're like, you know, when I'm underneath certain vehicles that people just don't take care of, you know, this this would be nice to have a little bit more purchase power. I can beat on them. I don't have to be as concerned about, you know, wasting them type of a deal. This could be valuable to you. Now, like I said, I feel like if this is your jam, if that's what your personal preference is, you don't, you're going that route, right? This is kind of more for the other people. And I have to tell you, if it is a situation where you love this satin finish, but you don't like that it's polished here, you know, on the ends, it might bother you enough that you step up to the black industrial finish. Typically, what's odd to me is I would think this would be the cheapest wrench, this would be the mid-tier, and this would be the most expensive. Like I said, on the research I've done pricing on HJE, that's how it falls, right? But so this one, again, super easy to clean. I never really have much issue cleaning wrenches off. Um, you know, I recently started using 
well, I think it's tub of towels and like it does amazing things like ratchet handles I thought that would just forever you know, look terrible. Uh, this like they come back and they could pass for new. It's insane. Granted, you know, like the lettering and stuff is off of them now, but uh, in terms of like, I thought that was just grease and oil embedded in a handle that was going to be there forever, you know, because I wipe them off, you know, generally with something like this and I call it good. I get it to where, you know, it doesn't transfer to my hand or something, but uh, they do some amazing things and I've never really had issues with wrenches. Now, you got to realize for the longest time I was just using Craftsman Raise Panel, USA Craftsman. But I never, I never really had issues outside of me like, you know, striking a spark, uh, where a wrench just like didn't come clean easily. So, um, that said, if you don't want to do polish, you've got polished, you're done with it, you want to get something else, something to distinguish your two sets. I honestly might go black. Um, again, a very unpopular opinion, but it's if you pay attention to my thumb here, I'm not doing anything nefarious. I have nothing to gain in this. If Wright sells tons of wrenches or HJE moves tons of stuff, I don't get anything. There's like no incentive for me. But if I just kind of slide my fingers here, right, there's little resistance. You know, you can feel the texture, but that's about it. If I come to this guy, it's got considerably more, and I'm, again, if you purchase these for yourself, just two wrenches, half, nine sixteenths, ten and thirteen, whatever you will actually use, uh, I think you'll come back in the comments and you'll be like, hey, you know, this guy's right. You know, I definitely feel that this provides the best purchase. So, and when I say purchase in that case, we're referring to the dexterity, the, you know, grip, if you will. So, it kind of comes down always to personal preference. I feel in this case... The price is negligible, right? Uh, usually this would be a situation where why are people going to buy satin? Because this set of wrenches is $450 and the satin is like, you know, 66% of that cost or somewhere in that range, 50 to 66%. So instead of paying $450, you are going to come in at like $225, $275. And that's just, you can justify that way easier and you've got money for more wrenches or sockets or something. Put gas in your truck to go earn another paycheck. This, again, being kind of the mid-tier thing, I don't know that anyone would really pick black, again, unless it's just, hey, you know, this is my assembly area, this is teardown, and this goes back in shipping. You know, like, if you're dividing things based on that, where if you see a three-quarter black up at the front, you're like, no, which one of you idiots did this? This stays in the back. Uh, type of a thing which again that's a very real deal if you ever get into you know, if you own your own business or you manage people or you're a foreman whatever as you go up the ladder your life becomes increasingly complicated but um, that's a very real reason but otherwise if people are just purchasing online which most people are going to do with these I don't know that anyone would buy the black because you're actually paying more money than you would the satin. So people just looking on the budget option, satin, I just want right grip, I don't care, boom. Uh, spend a little bit more to get this, spend the most to get that. People that want fully polished, I feel like they're just a tier of their own, you know, like these aren't considered. But for a second set, for a backup set, uh, for a field set, whatever it might be, I have to say, these are quite nice. Now, there is a huge downside to a black wrench, and that's when you drop it in a dark spot. Whether that's an engine bay, whether, you know, you're, like, trying to figure out why your lathe doesn't have you know, the spindle turning anymore, and you drop it in a crevice somewhere. This sucker reflects light. You put a flashlight down there, you'll blind yourself. This, you'll probably see, this is just going to blend in with grease and dirt, you know, from the 1950s, so... That is an, about really the only negative there in terms of just ignoring aesthetic and personal preference. But uh, they're all three fantastic in my opinion. Uh, I will tell you, if you're thinking like, well, that's nice of this guy to get, you know, all three half-inch wrenches. Well, <laughs> uh, I actually, I don't remember which way I did it, but one of these was to be half and the other was to be 9 sixteenths. And they just shipped me half, which works super well for the video. But I try to sort of stretch my dollars. I don't make much money at all doing this. In fact, it's like it hemorrhages money if you were to tabulate it. But uh, it's something I enjoy. It's something, this is curiosity uh, for myself personally. Uh, again, I decided this all stuff came together. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do full polish. It's closest to the Proto Challengers uh, that I've known and loved for so long at work. 
made my decision, but the curiosity was still there. It's not just a great video for you, but it's like, I kind of want to know. <laughs> so I'm still kind of stuck in, you know, like the pre YouTube era of life where, you know, I would bring this in and then I would like, you know, next time I see the old dudes I would hung out with, I'm like, Hey, you know, have you ever used right satin finish? I'm like, yeah, of course. Why would I buy the damn polished ones? And you're like, Hey, try this black one. I was like, no, oh. <laughs> yeah. like, I like that better. You know, I didn't know they had that type of a deal. So uh, it's one of the great things about the internet. Uh, like I said, for many, many people, these are wrenches. They don't care. Walmart has a wrench, Harbor Freight, Home Depot, Lowe's, you know, Amazon. But you, you are different and you actually care about these things. And that's why you're here. And that's why you've stuck around uh, and think, hey, how can somebody go on for 25 minutes about three wrenches? It's because it's interesting, <laughs> right? Uh, I don't sit there and watch cooking videos because, quite frankly, I don't care. But uh, this stuff definitely interested uh, the best thing I can tell you here is try for yourself uh, you can take my word for it if you're looking for guidance again if you're gonna if you frequently drop things and lose them do you keep that in mind before you go with the black set of wrenches uh, maybe you're annoyed by the fact that there's not like a metric set you can purchase and that cans it for you you don't want to sit there and type in 13 individual part numbers understandable uh, the satin again, that's kind of right's default if maybe you're just rocking, you know snap on, you know Or Mac or what have you and you're like I kind of want something satin and you don't want to go German Great option and you save the most money But whatever you do here, you're not gonna break the bank, right? So a lot of times if you have three tiers of tools, even if they're identical if the finish is different You will pay a premium uh, think about it like with uh, pliers wrenches, right? You know, you can kind of get like the, you know, industrial finish or you can get chrome. And if you want chrome, you're going to pay for it. <laughs> so uh, just sort of pick your poison here. And like I said, it's best for you. Let's say that you want 7 16 half and 9 16 Get the most expensive wrench finish, you know, as the smallest and cheapest wrench. This is practices I personally utilize. Uh, and then get the most expensive, get the cheapest, <laughs> that's the biggest size, right? Uh, if you're all metric and you just, you know, need a 10, 13, 17, or you want to get a 13, 17, 19, or you need another 22, get something that you'll actually use or that will be functional for you and do that as your investigative means. But I have to tell you, this is super, super nice. Uh, very, very impressed by the finish out on this black wrench, just in terms of the added tack. And it's radically different than the satin. The satin is kind of slick. It's textured, but slick. This is just next level in terms of grip. And then, of course, this, it's just, you know, <laughs> it's what you would expect. It looks like a high-quality chrome finish, and it acts like a high-quality chrome finish. So whether you have SK, Snap-on, Capri, whatever, you know, Icon even, uh, might not be quite as smooth, you know, here in this case with the right, it would be probably a bit better of a finish, but it's going to give you an idea. Uh, this satin here, I would call it like halfway. Take this and then take your Stavilla, Villa, and this is probably a little closer. I'd say 60% of the slider would be towards the smoothness of the full polish, but it does have some grip, and then this is just fantastic. So if you work barehanded and you're working in oily or greasy conditions, I would consider that. But uh, like I said, pros and cons on each. The great news, the price point will not prevent you from experimenting. So uh, with that said, I mean, these are identical. I don't know that I'm like really shortchanging you, not doing anything like side by side and head to head. Uh, but case in point here, you know, and when I say that's like polished, it really is, but it does this underside here kind of has a little coating that would mirror what you see on the full polish. But I mean, they're identical wrenches, just the finish out is what's uh, gonna set them apart. So, once again, there's your part numbers, I've got them linked down below. Again, check around locally if you got like an industrial supplier, or maybe your hardware place, mom and pop, mom and pop type of a facility, you might be able to get them cheaper, you might. You know, have the convenience of, hey, we show up every Wednesday and we'll drop them off, Steve, whatever. <laughs> but uh, if you have used these, I want to know. And it's got to be all three. And I don't know how many of you are going to have, you know, messed around and gotten all three. Some of you probably wanted to try right. And I would venture to guess you went with this one because you already had something fully polished. Let me know if I'm correct. Uh, some of you, maybe you're in like heavy construction or something, you only had black and you're like, hey, you know, I didn't know they had satin. 
If you've used them, let me know what you have used in the past, how they compare, and most importantly here for everyone watching the video, which of these wrenches do you like the best and why? Again, that's from personal experience. Let's say that you've maybe got your main set full polish, your secondary set of satin. Do you notice the difference in hand? Is there a pro and a con I'm not thinking of? How do they hold up over time? Uh, similarly, if you've used two of the three or just have one of them, uh, maybe you just went straight for this ticket, the full polished. How long have you had them? How do they hold up? How do they compare to what you used to have? That is the most useful information we can provide to people watching this video. And that's the ultimate goal to uh, sort of my curiosity cost me money and time. <laughs> And, uh, well, I'm very intrigued by it and like to experience it best firsthand. Uh, if you want to go out of here and you're like, you know what, I was going to buy the satin, but after, you know, seeing the video and a couple of the commenters, I'm going to go with the black. You know, whatever it might be, uh, if you've got experience, feel free to leave it down below. But uh, like I said, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. There are pros and cons in both cases, particularly here and here. I feel like this is the happy medium that you'd sort of be safest with. Well, it's a very real chance that you will lose these, you know, if you routinely work in dark places or something. Um, or it's just at least way, way more difficult to track back down. Um, yeah, in terms of the full polish, how long it lasts, how long it's going to hold up, I don't know. We haven't had these very long, and uh, I'll know over time. But like I said, if it's, if it's anything at all, like my beloved Proto Challengers, I'll be quite happy. So we're not quite done. We're going to continue to build this out, and who knows, maybe we'll add a couple here and there. Like I said, this was supposed to be half and nine sixteenths, respectively. But uh, it is what it is, you know, they were the same price, so I can't really complain. That's another thing, a lot of companies, you go up in a size, even if they're using the same blank or it's the same machine time or what have you, they just, boom, they're going to charge you more. In the case of Wright and the prices you find, you oftentimes will see, like, hey, the 9 16 and the 5 8 are the same price as the half. Cool, 7 16 might be the same price as 3 8 and 5 16 So uh, kind of play around when you place your order, stretch your buck as far as you can. But uh, like I said, right stuff is not hard to find. Now, if finding it in stock, maybe. <laughs> I would uh, not argue with that, you know, uh, sentiment at this point in time. But uh, people act like it's some, like, holy grail. you got to be some insider whose dad's uncle's sister's wife, you know, is married to. And that's not the case. Uh, those are people it's not as readily available. And uh, people kind of throw fits. Cornwell truck, I'd never seen one in my personal life <laughs> until, like, two months ago or something uh, and you never heard me complaining about it so it's one of those deals you know put forth a little effort put forth a little time if you want something bad enough you can find it right so uh, that's my thoughts on this matter what route would I go it would entirely depend on what you've got for me we've got satin wrenches out the wazoo and at work I like to go America I like to go with you know, what I've had success with in the past. I can't get challengers, so I wanted to go this route. Um, I don't know. While I love the tactile feel, I'm real bad about blacking out my engine bays. It's just something I do. I know, I'm a, I'm a Chrysler guy, but I black out engine bays most of the time. I don't know. That might be best for like a spare set at work if we go that route, and then maybe this is like your happy home set. I don't know. <laughs> It's, it's all up in the air. I just know that I picked the fully polished so I wouldn't have to like deal with it. But super, super interesting stuff in my opinion. And like I said, I was curious about it and I could find nothing online. So uh, here you go. You're welcome. Hopefully it saves you time and trouble. But, uh, my consensus, get what you want. And uh, the great news, you're not going to pay much either way wherever you fall on the spectrum, the differences. Uh, let's say that you get like quarter to three, quarter to one inch and you need an inch and an eighth maybe try your satin finish there if you like have one weird thing you do like maybe you buy a gantry crane somewhere and it has like inch and a half something go get a black one you know uh, if you constantly constantly use nine sixteenths grab two wrenches you know do what works best for you, uh, but by all means, enjoy it and let everyone know what you think. But uh, with that said, I'm going to quit rambling, try to crank out another video here, and then maybe run in and catch the end of game two. It was kind of getting runaway there before halftime, and I also need to move the fan. So, uh, anyway, let me know your thoughts on all this. LoneStarMopars.com is the website. You can find us Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all three at LoneStarMopars. 
Well, that said, thanks again for watching, and I hope I catch you back here for more action from the shop.